Hi everybody. So I had a few technical glitches this morning, um, had to set up a new link and my um, new link didn't automatically record. So <laughs> I'm going to re-record this for the, those guys that couldn't make it today. And it's all good practice for me as well. So here we go. I'm going to find my um, share desktop. There we are. Okay. So three days, three ways to calm the farm. My name's Emma Gilchrist, for those who don't know me. And uh, just a bit of background. I am a mum of two girls, nine-year-old and 11-year-old. I have a fur child too, he's called Barkley the Beagle. They're all home at the moment, so um, bean truck day, if he starts howling, that's why. <laughs> um, so how did I come to mindfulness? Uh, originally, I'm a, a qualified primary school teacher, but um, when I had my girls, I did struggle quite a lot with postnatal anxiety and insomnia for about on and off um, five years. And I ended up doing a beautiful mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, which really, really turned it around for me. Um, and ever since that time, I've just been fascinated with mindfulness, meditation, um, yoga. I've just been really called to share all these lovely tips, tools, techniques that work and help me so much um, with whoever will listen to me really. So I have a little business um, called Karma Dharma and uh, it started off five years ago as Yoga Sprouts. So I was teaching children mindfulness and movement. Um, and then about um, six months ago, I decided I'd like to um, teach adults as well, um, specifically mindfulness and meditation. So I run, um, well I did, run pre-virus days, face-to-face um, -face adult calm classes, which was um, a nice way to come together and calm the farm all together. So I'm hoping now um, this has pushed me to come online. Um, it's a big learning curve for me, I'm very much out of my comfort zone, but um, I'm embracing the technology and quite enjoying learning new things. That's what I'm saying to myself anyway. <laughs> um, so really, I, I just was called to, especially at the moment, just introduce you to some of the tools and techniques that have helped me in the hope that they'll help you guys. Very, very family orientated. So they are things that you can share with your family and, and just practice informally throughout the day. Um, things, little things for your tool belt to keep you amidst the chaos. So let's have a look, a little introduction to um, some of the first learning that, that I came across. So um, we have two types of thinking. Um, number one, insight thinking, and number two, default mode network thinking. So insight thinking I want you to imagine, if you will, um, moments in your life when you've had absolute clarity and focus and wisdom, those light bulb moments, or um, I think Oprah calls them the aha moments. So I don't know if you remember the, the little um, a devil on one shoulder, an angel on another. It's, it's helpful for me to visualize. The insight thinking is a little um, Buddha that's sitting on your shoulder. And this little Buddha doesn't speak very often. It's quite rare and infrequent. But every now and again, this little Buddha will just say something of absolute truth and wisdom and clarity. Um, whereas on the other side, we have what I like to think of in terms of a, a cranky neighbor someone who's often complaining, judging, arguing, 
this is your default mode network. And this actually makes up um, most of our thinking. 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And because of the, the human bias, we are, they are biased towards the negative. Um, it's geared that way to keep us safe in evolution. So um, from those 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, 80% of the time, they do tend to be of the negative bias. Um, and we call this the default mode network. So repetitive, criticizing, and comparing. What mindfulness does is it helps us to become better at choosing where to put our attention. So when we are practicing mindfulness, we're less likely to listen to this default mode network thinking, the cranky neighbor on our shoulder, and we're more able to access the inner Buddha, the Gandhi, if you will, that can give us these pearls of wisdom. But you need to um, make gaps in thinking to access that. In the West, we don't really have much mind training from a young age. Um, so what tends to happen is that we get very much caught up on this side of the, the screen with our cranky neighbor voice. And although the little Gandhi voice is always available to us, we just have to learn how to create those gaps in our thinking so that we can hear him speak. It's important to realize that the cranky neighbor voice that's in our head 80% of the time isn't who we truly are. And for me, this, these concepts that I'm about to share really helped me to step back from that negative inner critical voice to realize that, that that isn't who I truly am. So we know that we're not our thoughts because first of all, one, you try and switch off from your thoughts and you can't. Your thoughts just are automatic. They come and they go. They come and they go up to 80,000 times a day. Um, so we can't control those thoughts. We can't stop them. And an example of this is, say, if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, I think you've all been there, your mind starts ruminating. And if you could, if, it's, if it, you were the, your thoughts, you would be able to switch, stop, go to sleep. Um, the other way we know that we're not our thoughts is that number two, you often say unkind things to yourself that you wouldn't say to a friend. So that's our cranky neighbor, negative bias. Um, it's quite often directed towards ourselves. If you start to become really aware of your thinking and heard some of the things that you're saying to yourself a lot of the time, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? You're not good enough. Why did you say that? You must be really stupid to think that. <laughs> I don't think it's just me, maybe. <laughs> but um, if I ever catch my girls saying negative things about themselves, I will say to them, would you, would you say that to your best friend? So we have a little saying in our house, we speak to yourself as you would to your best friend. So anything that you wouldn't say to a friend, you shouldn't say it to you yourself. So this really helps me to, to realize that I am actually listening a lot of the time to my, to my mind, to my own mind. Another insight that really helped me was um, when we think of our brain as, as another organ, just like our heart or our lungs. So for example, um, our lungs breathe for us. They keep us alive, but it's the, the lungs aren't who we truly are in the same way that our heart beats for us. It keeps us alive but it's not who we truly are so we can say the same with our minds that they think for us and they keep us alive they keep us safe but it's not who we truly are so i want you guys for homework over the next 24 hours to be really aware of your thinking and also give your a funny name to those negative thoughts so when I first did this, um, I had to think about 
just get really switched on to my negative voice. And any time I caught a negative thought, I had to draw a tally, tally mark on my arm. Um, so if you guys are up for the challenge over the next 24 hours, you can show me tomorrow at 10 o'clock when we come back. Um, and we'll see, just, just see how much negative thought is going on right now, especially at the moment with all the craziness that's happening. It's all right to have those negative thoughts. That's, that's the most important lesson, I think. You just are aware of them. But in mindfulness, we don't judge them. We just say, ah, thinking, worrying, and then let them go. Another way to help you um, detach from that negative voice is to give it a funny name. So mine's called Ethel, that cranky neighbour. Her name's Ethel. And she also has a really strong Northern English accent. So that's where I'm from. So if I catch her, I will just call her out and I'll say, oh, who do you think you are? You can't do that. You can't use technology. You're rubbish at technology. You always get it wrong. Who do you think you are? You're never going to be good at this. All right, Ethel, I hear you. It's not useful. You can, uh, you can move along. You can uh, come back later. So it's important not to fight with Ethel because she will come from time to time. We're all human. We all have that voice in our head. The important thing is not to invite her in and give her a cup of tea and a biscuit. So can you do that for me over the next 24 hours? Really switch on to the thinking, the thoughts that you're having. If you don't want to draw a tally chart, you might want to put an elastic band and just snap it, just to sort of have that physical reaction to that negative voice. And um, give, it a, give it a funny name and a funny voice, funny accent, call it out and say, okay, thank you. And I'll look forward to hearing tomorrow um, what your names are and if you've, uh, if, if that helped. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see, see how you got on with that over the next 24 hours. Okay, let's do some mindfulness now, a little practice. So I've got five finger breathing and a five sense awareness. Using the senses is really, really useful in mindfulness because it helps you to come into your body and really ground you out of your head. So out of your head and into your body. Um, breathing is important to do, especially if you're in a wound up state. Um, the five sense awareness, there's uh, a technique that you can use that's similar to the one we're practicing today. But if you're having a panic attack or an anxiety attack, um, five things that you can see, four things that you can touch, three things that you can um, hear, two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. It, that's hard to do if you are in the middle of a panic attack. So always start with your breath. Your breath is your anchor. So five finger breathing, we'll practice it now. And then I'll take you on to a little mindful focus using our senses as well. This is a great one for children um, and adults alike because we, we're using our sense of touch, which really brings us into the body. And it feels lovely, it's a bit like the round and round the garden. So it's a really nice calming sensation that you can do anywhere, anytime, any place. So we breathe in through our nose, we breathe out through our mouth. As we breathe in, our tummy rises, and as we breathe out, our tummy falls. Good, deep, diaphragmatic breath. If I'm feeling particularly stressed or anxious, I'll really purse my lips and give a good, strong, purposeful blow out. So we'll do both hands just to really calm and ground before the five sense awareness focus. So if you want to do that with me now, breathing in through the nose, up the thumb, breathing out through the mouth, breathing in, breathing out, 
breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Five more breaths, breathing in, breathing out, in, out. In, out, in, out, last one, in, and out, feels nice, calm, relaxed, okay, five sense awareness, I've got this lovely book, actually, I should give them a mention, Yoga and Mindfulness Practices for Children, um, Jennifer Cohen Harper, and illustrated Karen Gilmore. It's a lovely one because it makes it really accessible for children. So they're nice, short, sharp um, focus activities. And this one is our five sense awareness. So, good for grown-ups too. I use it a lot. A lot of my mindfulness practice is informal mindfulness practices. So a lot of these techniques I'll do everywhere and anywhere. This is a lovely one when you're driving. If you're driving, doing, well not anymore, but when you're doing the school run, you can really um, just bring your attention in to your senses and away from your thinking so that you actually appreciate the journey that you're, that you're on rather than getting there and not even remembering the journey. Just creating those gaps in your thought to make way for those beautiful gamma waves from our nice little Buddha so we can hear him telling us his words of wisdom. All right, so you can do this sitting or lying down, but keep your eyes open first because we'll, we'll use our sense of sight first. So first bring your attention to anything around you that you can see, looking around, taking your time to notice what's in your environment. Now bringing your eyes to rest on one steady spot or if it's comfortable, closing your eyes. And seeing if you can remember what you saw around you. Picture it in your mind. And just hold it there for a moment or two. Now imagine opening your ears wide. and listening for any sounds around you that you can hear. It can be far, far away sounds outside of your room. Close by sounds inside of your room. Or even the sounds being made by your own body. Next, paying attention to what you can smell. There might be good smells or bad smells, or some of each in the air. Take a few slow inhales. And see if you can find one or more scents in the air around you. And if not, you can imagine your favorite smell. Now focusing on what you can taste. First notice what taste you can perceive while your mouth is closed. Does the taste change if you move your tongue around your mouth? Taste 
does it change if you open your mouth? Again, you can always imagine your favourite taste. Finally, bringing your attention to what you can feel. What part of your body is connected with the ground? How do you feel the pressure on the place where you're being held? If you check in with the muscles of your body, can you notice any other feelings? about the feeling of your clothes and your skin, the air on your face. Do you have glasses, jewellery or anything else on your body that's creating a sensation? Take a few slow breaths. And when you're ready, open your eyes or look up. Okay. So, I'll leave it there for today. Tomorrow we are looking at um, sleep hygiene and a little bit of brain chemistry, thinking about um, our frontal cortex and our amygdala and how that um, affects us um, when it comes to mindfulness. Um, my page, let me show you again. There we go. If you want to connect more, Karma Dharma Online, that's Facebook and Instagram. On my Facebook page, I've got a nice little group going called Community Calm, which I'm hoping will grow over the, the coming weeks and be a place where we can all come together, support each other, share tips and techniques. Um, I'm hoping to get more and more things online for you guys to help you through as we're, we're navigating this situation. Um, if you want to jump on there and tell me about your um, cranky neighbour voice, you might want to tell me what name you came up with. Um, don't forget to do your, your tally marks for any negative thinking. And just really start to notice your thoughts over the next 24 hours. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 10 o'clock, hopefully with... Uh, all the links working as scheduled to send out the, the link for tomorrow at around eight o'clock I think so fingers crossed that all works well tomorrow and um and I'll see you then thanks everybody take care bye